thank you very much uh, for coming. Uh, my name is Mikhail Khudnev. I'm working in Grid Dynamics. Grid Dynamics deliver, uh, delivers different uh, engineering services for uh, big e-commerce companies. I work in e-commerce search team, and I want to share our experience of uh, extending Lucene search facilities and hacking core Lucene. Uh, there is ten, <laughs> a tiny problem. I just recently realized that I have only 35 minutes to talk. Uh, it was really a sad fact. So uh, we we expected we, we planned to have a warm up discussion about cu custom queries, but I, I have to completely cut it off and put into uh, outside the scope. Uh, then the plan was check the Lucene essentials, and we will do this. So we will start from the fairly beginning about Lucene and inverted index. Then we will need to look into the information retrieval basis, right, to check the core algorithm, algorithms of uh, information retrieval. Then we come back to custom queries, uh, check one example, and uh, review the potential problems with uh, cu custom queries, which you can face on your own. And then I, I, I wanted to show one more case for cu custom query, which is not about search, but somewhere around the search. It's really interesting. And I hope we'll have time to cover this topic too. OK, we, will, we start from Lucene, mm, from Lucene Essentials. So, and uh, Lucene is based on inverted index. So, I want uh, to make it talk really simple. So, I start from the Wikipedia example for inverted index. We have these three doc documents, right? Then we index them and build the uh, simple inverted index. And from this uh, slide, we need to figure out what the postings list is. How many of you are aware about this term? What's the postings list? Okay, nice. <laughs> so the postings list, so, so this sequence of document numbers is a postings list. So we, we will refer many times to this term during this talk. So, and the po postings list is sequence of document ID uh, which the term occurs in. Okay? And <coughs> we, we will uh, refer to the term scorer many times during this talk and we need to figure out what the scorer is. So, and the scorer is fairly simple idea, it's just a forward only iterator on the posting list. Right, the scorer is an iterator and when we write the custom queries we, we are dealing with scorers so much. Okay, we, we need to look at the scorer e API. The scorer ex essentially is an iterator just interface is fairly simple. We have a document to get the current uh, document ID. We have document to move to the we have me method to move to the next document and move over many documents to the given one. And there is <laughs> also a cost estimation method, and the score itself adds uh, the method which allows to get the score for the current document. So the API is fairly simple, and there is the core classes uh, which show where the scores come from. Uh, we have abstract classes, query, weight, and score, right? And they uh, create each other. Uh, query creates weight, weight creates score, and so on. And any concrete query implements, uh, provides implementation for these three classes. Here I, I show the term query, which is a fairly basic uh, building block for Lucene queries. Right, and term score, which is uh, created by term query. Uh, this, this term score relies on document enumerator, which is obtained from index reader. So it should be clear. And uh, here's the code snippet, code snippet, which shows the essential search routine uh, in Lucene. So now you know how Lucene searches. It just loops by next doc method until score is exhausted. 
and for the current uh, for current document, you can request the score score of this match. Uh, here the collaboration of key classes in Lucene search. So we have index searcher which obtains query and collector. Uh, read index files via index reader and uh, search by query and push results into collector. Right, let's zoom this diagram in and we have more detailed collaboration. The searcher collabora collaborates with query to create score. Here I uh, emit the weight object because weight is not the purpose of our talk. So anyway, the score uh, asks query to, to create a score searcher asks query to create a score and then it delegates search to the scorer and it's really interesting detail and then score collaborates with collector to collect matched documents uh, here's even more detailed uh, diagram uh, we will not go to explain it <laughs> right now please check it later I just want to em 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 emphasize this huge loop so you all know that the <coughs> Lucene index is segmented. It, it, it contains a few segments. And score is created for every segment to search one segment only. So here's what this loop is about. Uh, so that's all about Lucene essentials. So we, we already know all what we need from Lucene and ready to create score. Right, and now we, we, we need to check the core algorithm from uh, theory of information retrieval. Okay, uh, first we need to look at the documented time search. Okay, um, so it looks something like this. We have sample index and disjunction queries so submitted for the execution. Like it, it is a query with optional terms. So uh, how we can execute this query in documented time search? Uh, we start from creating scores for every query term, put them into the beginning of the postings list, and, and th then on the every step of search, we rank, we order the scores by the current document ID. It looks something like this. Uh, this ordering allows us to pick up the scores which are positioned into the document with list number. Right. And uh, after we know all scores which are positioned into the document with the smallest number, we can collect, we can completely evaluate the score for this document and collect it into result collector. Uh, in this talk, I assume that the scoring function is uh, fairly simple. So it's just the number of query terms which this document hits. So and uh, in this stage, we collect uh, with doc with ID number zero, with score no number two, with, with score equal to two, right? We put them into collector. Uh, collector got the document ID zero with score two. Uh, score calls collector with method collect and pass in doc ID which is zero and score as collector uh, collector as score back for the score of this document and receive two right and uh, collector collects the do zero document with score two okay and the after we collect uh, some result we, we need to move scores onto the next document and then reorder scores by document ID again. So it's, this search is really fairly simple, right? So on the, uh, after processing every document, we need to reorder scores. Cool. So uh, there is the opposite approach for term and time search. Uh, that's that's what I really want to touch in this talk, but unfortunately I, I need to upload this into appendix. I need, I need to put the slides uh, uh, behind the main slides uh, because it's not really often used in Lucene and, and it's really interesting topic of the d discussion, whether you, need to, well, 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 whether you need to use this 
search. Okay, uh, but anyway, we, we, we need to choose the right one approach to for the search. And to compare these two approaches, I re refer to this white paper. This is absolutely worth to, to read, worth to look at if you work with Lucene. So here is the final uh, com comparison slide. So you can see that the documented time is intended to be less efficient and because it has a logarithmic queue in the complexity estimation formula. And we can see that uh, the longer query you have, the more penalty you pay for arranging scores after every, uh, after processing every po postings. So documented time, it's less efficient technique to search for the search. But from the memory consumption, uh, the situation is a little bit opposite. So the, for documented time, memory consumption is fairly modest. So it, it consumes a really small amount of memory. But ter term at times required to have re requires huge accumulator to accumulate partial scores. <laughs> and with straightforward implementation, it blocks uh, the practical usage of this approach. Yeah, Q is a no number of terms in term query, and or in, in query. And what is Q? Uh, we, if, if we ha have a time, we will look through all these formulas and derive this formula. So I actually have the slides which explain everything, but I just have no time to talk about it. Uh, we just can summarize. When we have really ill query, which is huge disjunction, there's many optional terms that more efficient approach to search is term at time search, right? And if the query is short, right, then the penalty which we pay for term for documented time search is not so significant. So we can say that uh, short queries, short disjunction queries can be executed by documented time search. And I can uh, also say that Lucene Im uh, has an implementation of term at time search. It has a way to overcome this problem with a huge memory consumption. It's a really interesting algorithm and interesting point to, for discussion, but Solar completely prohibits term at time search. So Solar do not, does not allow you to search in term at time search, uh, if you want, want to know. And we completely forgot about conjunction queries. We use mandatory terms, right? And uh, can you tell me which uh, s which search approach is used for executing conjunction query? Do you have an idea? Which one? Document time. Document the time search. So, uh, yep. And conjunction queries are really important. So because of this, we, we need to look in details on how they are executed. So we have the same sample index and uh, conjunction queries su submitted for the execution. It starts from fairly from the same, right? It creates scores and put them on the beginning of the po po posting list. But for con conjunction, uh, we need to uh, to collect result in conjunction query, we need to position all scores onto the same document ID. And because of this, on the every step, we just advance scores onto the document with the greatest number. Uh, in this sample, we start to ad advance all scores onto the document no number two. We did this, we did it successfully with these scores, but look at this. These scores jumps beyond the gi given document ID, right? And it stops, it, it, it lands on landed on the document number three. And now we change our mind and advance all scores onto the document with number three. Right, here we did this and this, and after all scores uh, uh, stays at the same document, we can collect this result into collector. So where, where, when we executing uh, conjunction query, the scores advance over one over, over each other. So, and it's really efficient process, really fast, and it's often referred as a leapfrog, right? And always a uh, really desired way to execute the queries. Uh, I, I need to write the formula which estimates the 
search complexity for conjunction query uh, is not really ac accurate and you don't need to be confused with formulas because uh, it, it just look fairly the same as we as we can see in disjunction queries but uh, you need to keep in mind that the conjunction query produces much shorter result so m is much shorter and because of this conjunction queries are much faster okay that's all with theoretical part now we're ready to deal with real life problem of custom queries right we're going to cover this uh, topic and resolve completely resolve this question so this topic is so important that I create the micro agenda for this topic we will start from looking on example well, custom query example a little bit artificial then we look into query generation approaches and then review briefly review a few problems with performance of custom queries and the our example query is a phrase coverage query uh, as we call it so when we have three words submitted for as a search phrase uh, we uh, we accept uh, documents wi which has these three words as uh, separate terms so it's clear right but we also consider as a correct coverage for this search phrase uh, document which has these huge three word terms so I also documents with this term I also consider them as a match and I also consider as a match the coverage with B word and single word term right and I did not uh, and this query did, does not accept other text matches so uh, don't pay a lot of attention to what is the purpose of, of this query because I, I will speak about business motivation for this at tomorrow at business oriented talk and <coughs> we just need to write such kind of query such kind of old, old query so uh, that's what we need to start from we, we need to start from extending boolean query because boolean query is a fairly basic block to to combine in another query right so we need to extend boolean query provide implementation for weight and extend boolean scorer 2 with our implementation because uh, boolean scorer 2 implements the documented time search and documented type search is uh, is easy for extending and for implementing your matching algorithms and key detail here that the our score extends uh, it inherits the collection of children's scorers and children's scores is a uh, scores which are produced by subordinate clauses query right so that score will have access to children's scores and it's a crucial thing for implementing matching constraints okay here is the approach for implementing next doc at this score right we just delegate to super next doc method and then we apply match verification routine and if the match verification fails so we do not accept this match candidate we do not accept this doc document we continue the loop for next document and here, here's the idea of how you can implement advanced uh, it's generally the same you <laughs> delegate a super method and then apply match verification so you, you apply matching your own matching constraint I and if this document fails the verification it ca can ca continues to look in next document and that's how you can verify the match right, so Im implement your own matching criteria uh, there's a sample snippet of, of code right uh, <coughs> score has access to children's scores and it can check where they're positioned on right and if the children's score is positioned under the same document uh, at which the main query score is positioned we can count this query as match contributor so we, we can count that this query contribute into the match of this document and in this snippet I just sum the length of the text of these uh, children queries right and then I check if this summary length is enough to cover search phrase I consider this document as a match 
So this code is, is not really accurate. It has several performance problems, but it's a just general direction, which you can follow. OK, uh, we, 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 need, we need to decide how we can <coughs> uh, generate such query. Uh, we distinguish two approaches for query generation. The first approach is reuse standard queries, combine st standard queries in some necessary way to cover the part of the business requirements. So that's how we can combine standard queries for cover subphrase coverage. You can see that uh, this query tree will capture documents which has these three terms as separate terms. And it also will capture document which has uh, these three word concatenation term. And you need to pay attention for how we combine the alternative match paths. We, we need to combine them by using disjunction max query. It's really important to topic. So you don't need to do, you sh should not do it by using Boolean query with should clauses. So you need to use disjunction max query. The advantage of this approach is that you can easily change so amend matching behavior by switching to the different query operators. And you also don't need to forget to add fields right, because we usually search for many di for few different fields, right? And you need to multiply that uh, tree of subphrases to the set of fields, and you'll get something like this. So I almost like this approach building custom query, but uh, I have few concerns about it, and uh, I'm proud to preserve, uh, to, pr to present an uh, alternative approach, which is, which is now like a flat query, which was contributed by that bright guy, Denis Kamalski. <laughs> Please welcome, Denis. <laughs> so we, we can, can just enumerate the uh, texts which we are interested in and fields and uh, forms like huge injunction query, which like uh, contains all all terms from Cartesian products, you know, and, and then you can apply ma match verification uh, for this huge injunction query. Uh, <coughs> the last thing which I need to mention in, in how to section is that you often need to have so some framework to manipulating with such query nodes for organize some processing and to build these uh, queries, right? And you can write it on your own, but I recommend to start from using flexible query parser, which is built in, uh, built in Lucene. So it's a really useful thing to try. Okay, we're going to... Uh, Problems section, but we actually have not much time. Um, I prefer to ignore problem with steadiness uh, be because it's, as far as I know, it's problem only is uh, Lucene 3 and it's gone in Lucene 4. But uh, there is a chance that you hit this. Okay. Anyway, we come back to it if we have enough time. Okay, here's the main performance pro problem with uh, that approach which I presented before. Uh, to, to describe this problem, I want to refer to this JIRA. This JIRA is about suc re re recent successful spe speed up, the recent successful performance optimization which was done in uh, standard query, so Boolean query. So, but it's highly relevant to what we are talking about. So uh, do you aware about mean should match? So what the mean should match is in the scene? How many, many of you? Uh, yeah, yeah we, we, we can require at least number of optional terms which should, which sh the document should have to be captured by disjunction query. We can make the disjunctions much more stricter. Okay, and here's a snippet for from Lucene 4.2. So we can see how it was implemented. And it was implemented and the, uh, on the way which I tell you, which I showed you tomorrow, on, on tomorrow <laughs> which I show, show, showed you be, be before. So just pick up next document, adjust all heat, and only after that is check the mean should match 
constraint. So it's fairly post-condition uh, query, right? Uh, and it's a reasonable way to write such query. So it's a re re reasonable way to apply mean should match uh, constraint. But in fact, it's a really inefficient way to do this. So let's look how it works. So we start from the document with ID three and check mean should match constraint, but it's clear that the document uh, three fails this uh, condition, right? And, <coughs> and, and then it started to loop on all results from this junction query. It's check document number five, number seven, no, number 10, but it's clear that there is no sense to do that because what, whatever you meet in these two postings list doesn't allow you to resolve mean should match constraint, right? We, we, need, we need to have match from the third score, right, to resolve mean should match. And something like this, some algorithm, uh, something l l like this, was implemented by Stefan Paul. So it works something like this. You just figure out where to advance on the first step and advances all scores to that do document. So it was implemented and committed and will, will be available and in Lucene, 4.3 and here is a benchmark so you, you, you can see that uh, performance improvement was really astonishing and the, what's our outtake for our sub subject is that if, he, if your custom query just enumerates the documents and applies some match constraint it is not really efficient and ideally you need to figure out how to advance this query uh, advance children's scores but it is not always possible. And uh, what we need to look at the next problem is the filtering, is a separate uh, Lucene facility. So generally, filtering is uh, somehow some kind of search, but the search without score. So filtering is a search with, without score. We remember that the query is some kind of factory to create score which is document iterator and the filter is generally the same it's just a factory to create the document iterator in some in few steps and it also provides some mm, methods for performance optimizations okay and this diagram shows how the filtering is implemented in Lucene 4 uh, index searcher has dedicated uh, filter search method where you, you can accomplish filter by a query and pass into Lucene Solcher and you see what it does internally. It just wrap uh, the, the given filter and query by filter query and pass them into regular search method, right? And more than that, uh, the fi filtered query is a spe specialized form of uh, conjunction query, just conjunction of two, two, two legs conjunction and more than that it's it's parameterized by the filtering strategy right we'll not go uh, look deeply on it it just I'll take for query customization if you figure out that you have problem with filtering right what you can do you need to check what actual strategy is applied and uh, tune it somehow, provide a better strategy, more applicable for your case, or even implement your own filtering strategy. So uh, the, the last problem which I want to re review today is uh, when the mean should match, I mean old mean should match implementation, which is uh, quite like the custom query which I, I proposed to write you before, uh, what if this query meets filtering? So uh, there is a well-known hint when, when you can speed up the really slow search by applying highly selective filter, right? And uh, it sounds mad, but if you apply, if you cut some results by filter to speed up search, but it's applicable in few scenarios. And what actually I tried to do in the last uh, Apache con 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 conference, uh, uh, it, it, would, it was a question for Stump the Jumps session. So I will s I submit a huge disjunction query to, to Solar to ex execute and provide really high mean should match constraint. It, 
it makes this query really, really hard, or really heavy to execute. And then I try to speed it up by supplying highly selected filter, right? I, I, I just specify the filter which pass on the two documents. So and ideally, what Solar should do should in this way, it, it, it just should check the score for these two documents, right? <laughs> but it, and, and it should take a few minutes, ideally. But in fact, it takes seconds to, to execute this query. That's actually the way how I won $100 on the Amazon <laughs> from StumzyChamp session. And uh, uh, there is two reasons for this word behavior. And there is two explanation why that custom query will not be uh, optimized by applying highly selective filter. We already know the first re reason. The first reason, it was an odd mean should match implementation, right, which was fix it now, but this custom query, you are not always, it, uh, this way is not always possible. So sometimes you cannot advance your children's scores. You, uh, you need to enumerate all results. And be, be because of this, the second reason for this slow search is, is really important, and I want to talk about it, is the API of the document ID iterator. So th 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 think about highly selective filter it try to advance that heavy query to some document ID, right? And query can be easily advanced to this uh, document ID and uh, figure out that this document doesn't pass the matching criteria, but then it have to find the next matched documents, right? And it runs this huge loop and enumerate many, many documents. So, and it's a performance kind of trap. Right, uh, and it's, it's a problem which you can face if you creating your custom queries. So be aware of this. And actually, you know, you already know everything from my talk to dealing with this problem. Uh, so you should be safe. Uh, so that's all for me. We, are, we have uh, three minutes for questions, and. Uh, and there is a shortcut for, for these slides, and you can ch check this and see uh, many appendixes section which I had to upload from the main agenda. So, and uh, I, it's re really sad that I have to move move them away. So, but I, I really want to talk about this. If you ca can check it, just let d discuss all this stuff. So that's all, and I'm looking for your question, and we have a prize for most interesting question. That's 